the topic is the crab claw wonder good morning everyone presenting on behalf of medicine 5 the crab claw wonder Presenting Mrs. K, a 32-year-old female from Jharkhand, who presented to emergency department of 10th of June with complaints of blackout episodes over the past one week. It was around four to five episodes over the one week, which was transient, lasting for some two to three seconds, with impaired awareness during the episodes. There were no seizures, no chest pain, no breathlessness associated with it. She also had giddiness over the past one week. However, there is no profuse sweating or palpitations associated and also generalized malaise for the one week. Past history, she was diagnosed as bipolar disorder at her hometown. She was on multiple psychiatric medicines for uh, six to seven years, which she had stopped over the last 2.5 years. And then she had restarted one month ago um, before presentation. So when she came, she was on all these medications uh, Chlorodicepoxy, clonazepam, lorazepam, lithium, lithium carbonate, and paroxetin. And there is also a history of multiple Ayurvedic tablets and syrup intake simultaneously, along with the psychiatric medicines. So, on examination, she was well built, drowsy, and delirious, was pale. She also had a Cushingard habitus. She had a moon phases, dorsal pada fat, and also zobis. And uh, hirsutism was also noted. So vital parameters when the patient presented to the emergency department, her pulse rate was 58, blood pressure was 80 over 50. Uh, hence, she was started on uh, noradrenaline and she was also given bolus doses of atropin. However, GCS was 15 by 15. So when she came to the ward, the initial vitals were pulse rate of 50 per minute, BP was 100 by 60 on uh, noradrenaline and GCS was 15 by 15. Systemic examination, cardiovascular, respiratory, per abdomen, and uh, central nervous system, there was no significant uh, findings. Uh, her power was bilateral 4 by 5 because of this uh, asthenia. Uh, so this is a 32-year-old female who had presented uh, with underlying psychiatric illness, who is on multiple uh, psychiatric medicines, also on Ayurvedic medicines, now presented with persistent symptomatic bradycardia, hypotension, and syncopal attack. So what would be the possible differentials? You all please log into Slido. Persistent bradycardia, hypotension, the syncopal attack. Thank you for. Okay. Thank you for the responses. So the differentials we considered were actually a bradyarrhythmias, drug or toxin induced, adrenal insufficiency because she was on multiple Ayurvedic uh, medications, and also hypothyroidism. So this is her initial ECG, uh, which showed a sinus bradycardia rate of approximately 60 per minute with a prolonged QTC of 487. This was done on the day of admission. So blood, in blood investigation showed a microcytic hyperchromic anemia with the normal leukocyte count and platelets. 
CRP was mildly elevated. Her urea creat liver function tests were normal. Uh, her electrolytes and minerals, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium were normal. TSH was uh, in the normal range, and so was T4 and FTC, and a random cortisol was 11.3 uh, microgram percentage. Uh, so then we did a Holter, which showed a sinus a bradycardia with an average heart rate of 45 beats per minute. So uh, now we have narrowed down our differential. So hypothyroidism was ruled out. So this is a 32-year-old lady with symptomatic sinus bradycardia, persistent hypotension requiring inotropic support along with syncopal attacks. So this is her heart rate pattern on day one. It was around 40 to 50 in that range. So this 2.30 a.m. actually we gave a shot of atropine. Shot of atropine and after that, this picked up and again it flattened down the line. And this was her blood pressure reading on day one uh, on NORAD. Uh, it was around systolic was maximum 120. Uh, it was like 110 to 120 systolic and diastolic of around 70 to 90 was the blood pressure she was maintaining on NORAD. So uh, since she was on multiple antipsychotic medicines, we initially thought whether it could be a, a lithium toxicity. So we sent a serum lithium level, so which was found to be in the normal range. So then we thought since she was on multiple benzodiazepines like chlorodiazepoxide, clonazepam, and lorazepam, we thought whether it could be a benzodiazepine overdose. So we stopped her uh, benzodiazepines and we also got a formal psychiatric consult. And uh, in order to prevent uh, withdrawal, she was started on a very low dose of lorazepam. So then we thought whether, because she was on our multiple Ayurvedic medicine simultaneously, she used to take around eight to 10 tablets per day along with her uh, psychiatric medicines. So we thought whether it could be a heavy metal toxicity. So we sent a blood heavy metal screen in which all heavy metals like arsenic, cobalt, chromium, nickel, everything was found to be within the normal range. And the patient was still bradycardic, still hypotensing, requiring NORAD and uh, uh, atropin boluses uh, on a PRN basis. <coughs> so then we, uh, uh, so the next step we sent a 24 hour uh, urine heavy metal screen. And in that, we found out her 24-hour urine arsenic was 149, the normal being less than 50 microgram per 24 hours. So uh, a diagnosis of uh, arsenic toxicity was made with the toxidrome of symptomatic sinus bradycardia and hypotension, the probable exposure being her uh, uh, multiple Ayurvedic medication use. So these were the medicines which you could get to only the photographs from her. These were all the medicines which she was using for her psychiatric and some dyspeptic symptoms. So these most of these medicines contain arsenic, lead as an ingredient. So uh, we'll have a look at arsenic. Arsenic is a metalloid that exists in elemental form, gaseous, organic, and inorganic. So basically, there are four common states. One is a metalloid arsenic, trivalent form, pentavalent form, and arsenic gas. So generally, this inorganic arsenic is found to be more toxic than the organic arsenic. So the arsenic poisoning could, uh, could happen uh, either as a suicidal attempt or a homicidal or occupational, environmental, hydrogenic, etc. The primary sources being contaminated soil, water and food. So in this table, if you look at the sources of exposure, uh, so in the inorganic source, it includes uh, like dyes, paints, uh, computer chips, so on and so forth, and herbal bar alternative medicine use and homeopathic remedies as well. So the kinetics of arsenic, so it is absorbed either by inhalation or ingestion or through skin. So it's distributed into the uh, red blood cells rapidly and binds to the hemoglobin. So if a patient has uh, anemia, it may the values, blood arsenic values might be falsely low. And the elimination is via the renal route. Uh, so mechanism of arsenic, it binds to the sulfidal containing proteins. So it has an influence in the oxidative metabolism hence and uh, might cause a lactic acidosis shock and even a multi-organ failure. It also impedes hemoglobin synthesis and might lead to citrocytic anemia and uh, 
Uh, it also uh, impacts methionine synthetase activity that by leading on to homocysteinemia and atherosclerotic potential. So poisoning has uh, uh, effects on multiple organs in our body. So first GI system, if you look at, it might cause nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, watery diarrhea, even like a cholera, the rice water stones. And next, the important thing is cardiac. In cardiac, we can have hypotension, shock, ventricular arrhythmia, irregular pulse, T wave inversion. And uh, CNS can present as acute encephalopathy, delirium, coma, seizures. And in the renal system, it can present as acute tubular necrosis. And even patients can present with anemia. So the diagnostic testing for arsenic toxicity includes 24 hour urine arsenic levels. ECG to look for QT prolongation, sinus bradycardia, and the X-ray abdomen. In some cases, the radio opaque arsenic particles could be made out from the X-ray abdomen. Nerve conduction studies if the patient has uh, features of any uh, axonopathy or so forth. And in certain conditions, even hair and nail testing could be done to find out the arsenic level. Uh, so the treatment for this acute arsenic poison will be the chelators. The chelators in um, Greek means the uh, crab uh, claw and hence the title. Uh, so the chelators include uh, British anti which is the dimercaprol, succimer, uh, which is the dimercaptosuccinic acid, and uh, dimercaptopropane sulfonate, which has not been approved so far for use. So this British anti-levisite will be 3 to 5 mg per kilogram intramuscularly Q4 to 6 hourly dose. So uh, <clears throat> the endpoint for chelation will be a repeat uh, urinary, 24-hour uh, urinary arsenic level less than 50. That will be the endpoint to stop the chelation. So in our patient, we used uh, uh, British anti-levisite dimer caprol. So we started a uh, herculation on 18th of June and we gave it over five days. Uh, and the dose was three to five mg per kg every four to six hours. Her body weight was 60. So we gave 300 mg IM Q4 hourly in alternate buttock. So per day she received six doses. Total in five days she received uh, 30 doses. So this was her heart rate pattern when she came. So here, if we look at, we started a uh, ball on 18th. Sorry. Uh, so this is where we started a ball first dose. So after this, if we look at, there was a gradual improvement in her heart rate and we finished the course by 22nd. So after that, her uh, heart rate was about uh, 70 and there were no further bradycardic episodes and uh, her, uh, Hypotension has also resolved. In, uh, I told that she was on NORAD before. We stopped NORAD on 16th and uh, ball was started on this 18th. So after this uh, st starting of ball and after this chelation, there are no further hypotensive episodes as well. So this is her ECG post chelation, which shows a sinus rhythm with a heart rate of approximately 90 per minute. And her QTC was less than 450. So this is the post chelation halter, which shows a sinus rhythm with the average heart rate of 81 beats per minute. So if you compare, this is her ECG on admission and this is her ECG on discharge. Here we could make out the sinus bradycardia and here her rhythm was restored. And if we compare the halter on admission, it showed a sinus brady with the average heart rate of 45 on discharge. It was a sinus rhythm which average heart rate of 81 beats per minute. And her uh, pre chelation urine arsenic was 149, which is supposed to be less than 50, whereas post chelation was found to be 0.1. And one more thing is we incidentally find out that her urine lead level was also high. So this is one case report published in the International Journal of Medical Research from Mumbai. It's a 24-year-old male who presented with diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, giddiness, history of Ayurvedic medicine intake. He also presented with hypotension, bradycardia. ECG showed a junctional bradycardia. And uh, he also required ionotropic support and fluid resuscitation. However, he didn't require any chelation therapy and uh, he symptomatically improved within three days uh, and was discharged. Whereas that was not the case with our patient.
So this is the uh, uh, PCG of the case report. Uh, so we discharged the patient. Uh, uh, on discharge, she was conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. Her pulse rate was 92, BP of 110 by 70. And uh, she also came for an OPD follow-up, and she was absolutely doing fine. And she was planned to uh, come for a follow-up after three months with a repeat blood-heavy metal screen and a urine 24 hours arsenic and lead. So a learning point will be regarding an acute arsenic poisoning, the clinical features, diagnosis, and the available chelation therapies. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? How many days she was, how many months or days she was taking the Ayurvedic medicine? Last one month she was taking continuously. She started only one month back. So. Before she was, two years ago she was taking, then she stopped. Oh. Last one month she was taking continuously along with the Ayurvedic medicines. Now that Ayurvedic medicine, how long she's taking? Only one month? Yeah. Only in the last one month she started. Did she have it? Is she from, uh, I'm sorry, I came. Jharkhand, ma'am. Jharkhand. Yes. We have in, um, people from Calcutta, I think it's to do with the well water that there is arsenic build up. Uh, but I'm not sure Jharkhand is such, but I know that there were samples that were tested. And there is there are some areas, pockets where there is from the groundwater, people who do use the pump water kind of thing, that there is ars high arsenic levels. So that could affect, when I mean, considering that it's only one month, you should ask me if it's a longer time. Right? But it's, it's.